this skeleton isn't quite like anything that we've seen before. So maybe, just maybe, this could be a new species. To say I'm interested in bones is a bit of an understatement. Over the best part of three decades now, I've been studying and researching skeletons, and it's fair to say there's not much I haven't seen. But today is a first. I'm here at Christie's to see an incredibly rare, newly discovered dinosaur skeleton. James, this is incredibly exciting. What a beautiful fossil this is. Now, I'm already scanning what it is, how big it is, the different uh, features here. It belongs to, am I right in thinking, the Oviraptosauria group. These were fast, tall, bird-like dinosaurs. Yeah, absolutely. Quite useful to think of it as a cassowary of the Cretaceous. This is in the late Cretaceous, 68 to 66 million years ago. This would have been running around trying to avoid being eaten by T-Rex. Stood about six foot tall. Same in length. There's evidence on the bones of this animal and certainly others in the group that they were feathered. They've been described as a bit like a velociraptor but with a slightly strange head and we've been calling it Spike. These canignathids and oviraptors were fast. The length of the legs, the height of the hip bones off the ground, I reckon this would have been running at around 30 to 38 miles an hour. So that's quite a bit faster than Usain Bolt. Most oviraptorsaurs would originate from Asia and predominantly somewhere like Mongolia. Yeah, absolutely. So those first ones were found almost 100 years ago to this one, in 1924, the first oviraptor is published. Whereas this hails from North America. This was dug out of the Hell Creek Formation in South Dakota. And we have 100 bones from the animal. And for these canignathids, that's almost unheard of. Mm. There are three or five comparable specimens. Most of the time, it's only fragments of a leg or a tiny bit of the jaw that survive. So to have all those elements found on that single site um, from the Hell Creek is really special. It's like having a jigsaw with all the corners and a good chunk of the middle in as well. You've really got a picture yeah. of what this animal was like, how it lived, how it behaved, and the preservation is amazing. The quality of the bones that survive is astonishing. Absolutely beautiful, especially the, the right leg and the metatarsals and claws. Just exquisite. What sort of ecology and role within the environment did this animal have, do we know? So probably carnivorous, omnivorous. Maybe with that beak it's stealing eggs from Triceratops. These claws, it's doing damage to something, maybe in defence or maybe hunting. Ten years ago, a similar animal called Anzu was discovered that's been dubbed the chicken from hell. That was larger than this and had quite a different shape to the beak as well as the, the legs and claws. So this is not quite like anything that we've seen before. So this is possibly a new species that we didn't know about. There's so much detail here. It's, it's, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful as well as scientifically interesting. When you start looking at places like the claws and the face here, you start to build a, a picture of what this animal was like. And what's really interesting is you, you see this, and of course it would have had muscle and, and feather, but actually this would have been full of keratin, so the same stuff in your, in your fingernails, which gives us in this potential, this hope, that it could have been brightly coloured, or patterned even, or, or much larger and even sharper isn't, than we have here. Isn't that wonderful to think about? I love that colourful world of dinosaurs now. Certainly when I was growing up as a child, dinosaurs were all very brown and green, very lizard-like. Whereas my kids now understand that dinosaurs were much more colourful, they were feathered. And I find that much more mysterious and intriguing to imagine this beautiful world that existed in the late Cretaceous. Well, it allows suddenly for courtship and territorial behaviour and display that we, we never imagined when we were kids growing up. They're much more interesting suddenly. Absolutely. These were living creatures and they exhibited all those behaviours of animals that exist today. And that just brings them to life. I think this is the next best thing to a time machine. I could spend quite literally all day looking at this, James. I really could. Thank you so much for letting me visit and have this opportunity. Absolutely. And for about a week ahead of the auction, we'll be on view with Spike here at Christie's. And we would encourage as many people as possible to come and see this specimen in person. And that will just help paint a slightly better picture in your mind about what life was like in the late Cretaceous 66 million years ago.